Today we're going to be tracking down an underground water leak using a thermal camera and I will link to the one that we're using today in the description. I've had this for several years now and I think it's one of the better thermal cameras that you can buy if you want to have one that's portable and you can connect to your smartphone. The model that I'm using uses USB type C but they also make one that is compatible with the iPhone. Comment down below and tell me the worst water leak horror story that you have encountered. It seems like almost everyone has some kind of a dramatic water leak story. Based Basically what was happening is the customer had no hot water even though the hot water heater was working properly as fast as the water heater could produce hot water it was just running out into the ground and so when they turned on the hot water they would get some flow but not the hot water like it's supposed to be. So let's go check out and see what we can find with this particular water leak. We should be able to see the heat coming from the location where the water leak is or at least that's the hope. Connect to Vlear 1. So it looks like it's loading, 15 seconds. All right, it is calibrating. And bada bing, bada boom, you can see we are in thermal imagery mode and we are ready to go and investigate what's going on. Let's go do it, let's find the problem. Okay, perfect. The Sorry. water heater is back here. There's the water heater. I just turned the valve on. Okay. And uh, we have some really hot water coming through here right now. Yep. This is as far as I can see, probably where it's going is coming through this pipe. Yeah, it's really hot. Floor? Yeah, right here. Okay. Now this is a slab on grade house. We started by looking in the mechanical room where the water heater is located, but the temperature of the floor looked pretty even in there. We checked the garage, even though it seemed like the water lines should not have gone underneath there, but you never know which direction somebody's gonna run the water lines, so you kind of have to just check everywhere. We then checked over by the kitchen and the bathroom and the living room, the rest of the house. We didn't find any spots that were warming up whatsoever. But then we came back to the mechanical room where the water heater is, and here's what we found. So we were able to locate this leak. And you'll see that right up here in this room, this is a concrete floor, and that center area right there is where we're pretty sure that leak is. When we first started, this floor area right here was not warm at all. But then as the water heater ran longer and longer, it eventually got to where this area just kept increasing in temperature. When we first saw it, it was like 70 or so, and then it got all the way up to 77, I think it was. Here is like a hot spot. That's the hottest spot. That's 76 right now. But this is also pretty warm right here. Over here, it's also like warm-ish. One thing we could do is Get, take a hammer drill and just like hammer drill a small little hole and then just see if you have if it comes up muddy yeah. you know yeah. or wet so it, would, it would take something pretty unique to make that sort of a pattern yeah um but i do kind of want to listen to it you shut off the shut off the water heater okay or shut off the water over here it's off yep i can definitely tell it was turn it on again yep it's back the flow rate was kind of impressive it looks like it's flowing at about, probably about two gallons a minute. That's like having a shower running. Oh, I bet it's faster than that. So shut that off again. Just like that. It stopped flowing. Man, that is so perfect of a spot for it. If it was just a little bit further that way, I'd be under the wall. Hopefully it's there when we get there, so. We went ahead and opened up the floor in the location where the thermal camera was indicating and a couple feet down right there was exactly where that leak was located. So it worked out perfectly in this situation. We also got lucky that this line was right in the middle of this room instead of under a wall or some other place. It could have definitely been anywhere. Now, if you had an underground water leak, but it was not on the hot water side, uh, you could definitely use this exact same method. You would just be looking for a spot on the floor that's colder since the ambient temperature of the floor probably was 60 something degrees uh, you would end up with a spot that's much cooler than that if you had you know your 50 degree water uh, saturating the ground whoa I kind of poked it with my knife so but it was really thin it wasn't quite that extreme so but yeah it's very thin all along it do you yeah. think it's oh wow do you think it's just from high volume through a small pipe I guess huh Probably that, and it's hotter, and it was laying on the clay, between the gravel and the clay, so yeah. I think there's more corrosive stuff huh. in that soil layer, but 
The whole thing is coated in verdigris like this. In a green sleeve. <laughs> the type of pipe we're working with is copper that slowly had corroded through over time. This is one of the reasons why you might want to consider using a thicker wall copper whenever possible or use some kind of an alternate material like PEX. You can actually bury PEX under the floor in this exact situation. Obviously there's no material that's going to last forever uh, and this copper who knows how long it's been in here but it obviously worked fine until recently. Now the tricky part about repairing an old copper water line like this is that the outer surface of the copper is not very even and therefore standard fittings don't really work very well. So the best way to go for repairing any copper in any location like this is to go ahead and braze in a new section of copper and that's what we did. But there's another reason why the brazed method is required in this situation and that actually comes down to plumbing code. Now in Minnesota we use the UPC so this could be different in different states but the code states that if you need to make a connection underneath a concrete slab on a copper pipe that connection shall be brazed. This repair didn't look particularly fantastic, but it was watertight and is more of a temporary solution as it's highly likely that there's going to be another leak that develops down the road underneath the concrete. And so the recommendation that we made to the customer is that probably overhead uh, new PEX tubing is going to need to be ran to all the different locations in the house that need it. So unfortunately the existing piping is just not sound enough to really last very much longer, but this was a great solution in order to get it up and running. Now you might have noticed that in some of the video uh, the image wasn't quite lined up with the thermal image, and that's just because I didn't have the alignment set quite right. If I go in here and go into camera alignment, that's going to allow us to position this properly. Okay, so you gotta go this way. Oh, there we go. So you can see my toe. So I just had that slightly messed up uh, the other day when I was taking the video of the room. Now we should be good to go and the shapes are gonna properly align with the thermal camera. Now you can also change the image mode from this MSX mode to just infrared. You can see how it's just more blurry there. It's just because just using the thermal camera. Or you can look at the depth camera, I believe is what DC stands for, correct me if I'm wrong. Uh, or you can use a combination. And now you can see our alignment is really nice and would look a lot better if I had done that before I took all that video. Either way though, this really works super well. Having this has been way more useful than I thought it would be. And I've had this thing for a couple years now and haven't had any issues with it whatsoever. Uh, I'm always the guy that they're like, oh hey, I think Ben has a thermal camera. I'll call him, have him come over and... Uh, see if you can find the problem. So once you have one of these, if you tell anybody, then uh, they're always gonna be wanting to borrow it or have you come try to track down an issue for them. I'll link to jackhammers and stuff in the description too, the ones that we've used for years and years. Uh, so you guys can check those out if you are interested. Pretty amazing what these little FLIR cameras are able to do. Again, link down below if you guys wanna check them out. Hope this video was helpful for you and uh, gave you an idea of why a thermal camera might be a great thing to add to your tools. If you do any sort of construction or remodeling work, there's a lot of things that you can figure out with a thermal camera. So thanks so much for watching and we'll see you guys in the next one. See ya.